Thank you. Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. It's my honor and a pleasure to be here to share with you my re experiences in the fields of uh, artificial intelligence and uh, imaging processing, computer vision, pattern recognition, and its applications. Um, here is a very brief, uh, very, very brief history of uh, my experience at Germany at Marburg University as a visiting professor. The title is called Otto von Kurik, Distinguished Guest Professor. And here is Otto von Kurik. This, uh, this is the ever first vacuum machine in the human history, invented by him. And he also proved that the pressure of the air does exist about 400 years ago. And this is the invitation letter. And this is the response from our president. And that is, I believe, is the inspiration of thinking and learn. These are the two key words from my talk today. And also creativity. And most important of all is the problem solving. Those are the spirit of artificial intelligence and pattern recognition. So very simply put, what is artificial intelligence? It is to use computers to solve problems for human beings that normally can be handled only by human beings. In other words, it is a simulation of machines by the machine human, human behavior, uh, also involved in machine learning. A very brief history. Those are four people around 1955. This, this is a, this is a MIT. This is uh, when I invited Pete's wife to uh, oh, Can you hear me? Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and uh, this is the visit of this lab. He also has a book called Society of Mind. And can you see he used the word mind because that is uh, very important in this area. And this is another Professor Makazi and Professor Rochester. And also there's a Zada, which is about the Zadi, the, the fuzzy, fuzzy logic, which is dealing with not exact data. Things like, for example, how old are you? I'm 14 years old. Nobody says I'm 14 years, 12 months, three days, and four, 14 hours, and 30 seconds. In daily lives, we do not need that precise data. So fuzzy logic, fuzzy data is quite useful for solving a lot of problems. And he's the volunteer, volunteer of the uh, Fuzzy logic. Okay, a very brief timeline for academic point of view and uh, uh, since uh, from uh, around 1950s or all, all the way to 19, uh, uh, 2020s. These are very brief history of the AI. And also very de this development can also be viewed this. It can also trace back to the invention of computers. Around 1941, the ever first electron computers was invented by ILIAC. Also the IBM, and then followed by that, that is neural networks around 1943. Up today, still alive. See, such as Maklu Pitts. This is, this is artificial neural network versus the, uh, compare very briefly with the natural neural network. This is a natural neural network which exi exists in our, in our human brains, human bodies, that is very, very natural. In other words, these are the biological scientists are studying, whereas these are the computer scientists are studying. They look like entirely different, but the goal is the same. Try to study how human being works, how natural works, and then try to use artificial means to help to strengthen the results. Some advantages versus disadvantages, of course. It's much faster. It's an uh, ordinary processor. It has uh, multiple processing reaching simultaneously, which is why we mentioned briefly about the quantum computation. Of course, it's also a disadvantage, such as uh, it is very, very expensive to construct, 
and uh, it uh, has a bottleneck called the Neumann bottleneck. Also, the, another thing worth mentioning is the Turing test. Around 1950s, Mr. Turing invented the first idea. He said, he, the, the, the very famous thesis called, a, actually it should be called Church Turing, but somehow recent years only people mention the name of Turing. But uh, it has only one sentence. It says, every effective computer function Every effective computer function is Turing computable. I believe informatics, your computer science department at, at KTU, must also have this common courses, uh, mentioning this kind of uh, idea. That is the fun fundamentals of computer and information science, which is also the foundation of AI, of course. And uh, using his name, his, uh, there's a award called Turing Award, which is equivalent to the Nobel Prize Award. Recently, we have just announced the Nobel Prize of Medical Science, Chemical, and Physics, just, a few, just yesterday, I believe. Now, the, in computer science, there's an equivalent award called Turing Award, which is awarded to the highest level, the greatest achievement people uh, agree. And uh, this is one of the people who, uh, of Chinese guy who uh, got this award, Professor Andrew Yao from Tsinghua University. It has been applied for a lot of things, including military service. You, you see, recent weapon, weaponry is very, very advanced. It is so advanced that uh, people cannot imagine what destructive power it will cause to human beings. That's another concern. Also, it's applied to game, such as chess. Uh, in long, for a long, long time, people believe that Western chess is simple, that the machine can beat human beings, so that's no Wonder. But for a long time, people believe that there is a very sophisticated chess called Weichi, also known as ego in, in Japanese. For a long time, people think that it's so complicated that a human machine can never beat human being. However, a few years ago, at the contrary, the machine does beat human being. So that's called show the AI clock. And see, here is an example of the uh, the so-called. Originally, it's Weichi, which means surrounding the chess. It's a strategy to surrounding your enemy. There's only two white and black, two different colors. You try to surround your enemy and occupy larger area. At the end, whoever occupies larger area wins. That's why it's called Weichi. In Japanese, it's called Eagle, because the, uh, in, in the Western side, they, it, they only know that it's called Eagle because that is uh, learned from Japanese, but all right, Japanese learn from China. So very, very originally, it's called Weichi. And we found that uh, there is a algorithm in AI design. Somebody is designed AI techni technology. The algorithm is so smart that it can beat human being. So that is a very surprising result, showing the powerful direction of the AI. So this is one of them. I think this is a first, the, the, the best human being chess player, and he felt de depressed because he was beaten by a machine. Now also around 1970s, the so-called expert systems, which try to solve problems according to a certain area, according to the expertise. It is very narrow, so now people don't talk about that because it is replaced by AI advanced aspects. But let's just let me mention a few seconds. There are more examples uh, such as CARPA, DARPA, and also Artificial Intelligence Group, JPL. Again, logic I just mentioned before. Okay. Uh, yeah, me, people may wonder why AI, why we use AI. Very simple, because human beings need more help, needs more powerful tools to help us solve daily problems advanced problems. For example, the translation, automatic translation, there is a machine called Lalis. It can answer a lot of questions such as, what is the best place in eating Chinese food? Now, it is, it ha according to this mechanism, it can answer you that my favorite place is in California or in Maine, northeast of the United States. I don't know whether there's any Chinese food in this country. I believe there are some. But if you want to ask the artist, he may give you some answers. 
and who invented the paper, paper towers? Again, it's the Chinese long time ago, long before Europeans. And who invented the pet rocks? It's the Wright brothers. So those kind of things are What happens? It's just accident, okay? Uh, yeah, the chest today I mentioned before around 1997, it's also called Deep Blue, Gary Kasparov. Those are the Western chess. And uh, there are still some weakness, of course, of AI. Uh, if they fail to understand at least three key things. First, the need for knowledge. Let me underline these words, knowledge. Knowledge is very important. We still do not know exactly how to, the word knowledge, we use that daily in the human daily life, but if you want to use the machine to do the same thing, it's still a, a challenge. And uh, the scalability and the problem complexity is uh, exponentially growing. The difficulty is exponentially growing, not a million is growing. So that's, we, that's why we have to face the challenge. There's a need to perceive the world. What do you think the world is? Now, the, they also mention uh, people t t t talk about the so-called deep learning. Deep learning is very, very complicated in terms, for example, in the natural language. We talk, the, we use the natural language in a lot of countries, in Europe, in America, in Japan, in Ch China, in India, but that's natural language. We just take it for granted. So we learn from ever since we are, we are born. Maybe the first teacher is our parents, our mother, our father, sisters, brothers, and then school teachers. Just gradually, we learn the whole thing, we, little by little. But then when you want to use computers to do the same thing, we find that it's extremely complicated. For example, this sentence, very simple English sentence. It's a, let me just read the sentence and then you can see the difficulty. Alice, who had been reading about syntax net, saw Bob in the hallway yesterday. Everybody can understand easily. However, if you analyze it, it is very complicated. It has some structures. Use the structures which can f be formalized by Mr. Chomsky. Mr. Ch I will mention that Chomsky. Chomsky is a professor Chomsky at MIT is the ever first human being who formalized natural languages and connect the natural language into uh, uh, you, in the machines. Therefore, the computer lang programming language, they combine this, the concept is the same. Computer programming such as Pascal, Fortran, even Python, um, Ergo, Lisp, those kind of things, they have their structures, and those structures are different from human language structures, that's right. But they also have the same phrase structures. They have the, 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 the idea is very similar. That's the point. In other words, what we're talking about is that uh, the idea of the syntax. Syntax is the foundation of all languages. From the syntax, you have to see the understanding, the meaning, interpretations. And then from that, you can do something according to it. It's called pragmatics. We'll see level by level. For example, another English sentence, I saw a man on a hill with a telescope. Everybody can understand it very easily. However, don't you realize there are two possible different meanings, two possible different interpretations. First is that I saw a man on a hill, and I saw that with a telescope. Second interpretation is that I saw a man on a hill, and that man on the hill is with a telescope. The same sentence. There are two different interpretations. Yeah, therefore, it's uh, the concept of uh, ambiguity. And we are living in a society, in a, in a world full of ambiguities. We didn't realize that. Sometimes it has uh, jokes, it creates jokes. Sometimes it may cause disasters because of different interpretations. So that, when we come to the computer, to machine, we should be careful handling those. Otherwise, it will be that we try to use computer to help us pro solve problems. If we are not careful enough, then instead of helping us solving problems, it may cause troubles. So, okay, that's a very important thing.
this is sentence is really hard one. Uh, so I don't have time to analyze it, but you can see there are about how many different interpretations. It is exponential. For example, King and Su, and King and Su or Li, King and Su or Li, boom, happen again. There is change. Uh, as the length of the sentence grows, the interpretation, the path of interpretation grows exponentially to thousands, even tens of thousands. So in other words, we should be careful. Theoretically, it's a very challenging problem. Maybe it's still, still not only partially solved. Okay, there are some main approaches, such as uh, used by uh, Google, and machine learning is based upon the pattern based. In other words, pattern is very important. I will very briefly explain what pattern is. Everybody has his own life uh, ha behavior. You live in this world, maybe years, tens of years, and then you have your own pattern. And everybody has his own pattern. And a group of people has a group of pattern, and so forth. So are the behavior of machines. Yeah, it can also help us solve the uh, dealing with the emails. We, ha we receive thousands, I believe, thousands of emails every day. And most of them maybe just uh, garbages. So how do you know which is garbage, which, which is uh, really important? It can be filtered in advance. That's just the AI technique. Also driving, driving without uh, drivers. So again, learning, we call that learning, pattern, data, and self-programming. Those are the major steps of AI. Also ca called hybrid systems, use different systems together try to use their, uh, maximize their advantages and strengths. And there are more examples such as OCR, robotics, speech recognizer. And let me spend a few more seconds for this particular application of ATM. It was first studied at MIT, Sloan School, dealing with management. I was working there for about six or seven years. Finally, we came to the ATM so that you can automatically recognize a check or do automatic depositing and so forth. So that 24 hours. In the past, only the bank can only work at the daytime from eight o'clock to four or five in the afternoon. Nowadays, it's 24 hours because it's ATM. You can deposit a check or cash to get some cash at any time using this ATM system because it can automatically recognize what you want to do. You can even uh, pro, uh, forecast the, uh, some game, serious game, as a, such as the World Cup. A few months ago, there's an estimate that uh, two countries, uh, I, I should say that it's not very, it's not always correct. Sometimes the AI also makes mistakes. This time, it does make a mistake. It forecast, forecast that Germany is the winner. <laughs> Actually, Germany is not. But France is, so it's half, heavily correct. So it's not, it's, the other words, okay. It needs to improve, to the improve, of course, okay. Okay, now, another subtopic is called pattern recognition. What is pattern recognition? It involves several keywords. First, what is uh, cognition? Re what is recognition? Recognition comes, is a combination of two words. First, cognition, cognize. Cognize means to learn, of course. How do you learn? With brain. Once you learned, then you can recognize based upon what you learned. And what is a pattern? Very, uh, there are thousands of definitions. <laughs> but very briefly speaking, a class of objects that share some common properties is called a pattern. For example, today we have about 40 or 50 people here. We are a pattern because we are all interested in this conference and we are all interested in this uh, talk. Those two common properties cause a, a, a form a pattern. However, it's a very finite pattern. Whether we are 40 people, 4,000 people, 4 million people, it's still finite. The real challenge in real world is infinite patterns. What are kind of patterns are infinite patterns? Well, uh, for example, handwriting. 
Just take this for example, uh, the all English alphabet. You say, well, there are only 26 English alphabet. How come it's infinite? Well, take capital letter A alone. How many ways you can write capital A? Infinite ways. Some are thick, some are thinner, some are straight, some are tilted this way, and that way some has noise, and so forth. So there are infinite ways of writing an English letter A alone. So in other words, how do you recognize English letter A? There are one, two, three strokes. So, sounds very simple, but you have to consider all possible ways of writing this A. Then it's an infinite data set. So how do you recognize infinite possibility, possible ways of writing A? You still recognize this capital A because you, you keep the three most important patterns. That namely, there are three strokes. One stroke here, the other one here, and the horizontal strokes, which touches approximately the middle points of the first two strokes. That's the pattern of this A. So in other words, every letter, every numerals has its own pattern. As long as you govern the pattern, then you can recognize it according to its pattern. So, so are, so are what? So are the human faces, fingerprints, voice, handwriting, signature, and so forth. The very brief history, it takes about one class, uh, one lecture, one semester lecture to talk about this, but I have only one minute. Very briefly speaking, around 1950s, AI has evolved first, and a PR is a part of it, much, much smaller. But PR grows so rapidly, it wants to be independent. So be it. It does have a time independent of AI. However, they cannot be separate. They are so closely related. So to nowadays, they combine again, but not the same, not back to the same as before. Today, AI is here, PI is here. They have an overlap, which is the heart core, and that heart is the learning. In other words, AI and PR both deal with heart, uh, with learning as the most important part of, of uh, its field. Also, so-called biometrics. If you talk about pattern recognition, which is related to human bodies, which is very common, of course, and also important, um, then it's called biometrics. For example, fingerprint and uh, face recognition, speech recognition, uh, iris, and so forth. Those are called biometrics. Oh, there are a lot of scenarios. I think we can see this is enlarged fingerprint. Yeah, there are some special properties you can do detailed analysis. And also it can be proved that it's unique. It has said right applied to the, uh, a lot of fields such as uh, cellular phone. If, we, if you uh, enter say some huge crowd situation such as uh, Hollywood, uh, the, the, the Disney World, not only have to buy ticket but also have to pass this first test, your fingerprint to prove that you are not terrorist, for example. And this is a 9-1 example. Um, and uh, in a lot of locations, uh, however, uh, fingerprint is so important, but, uh, uh, but they are human, the, the, the every government has uh, its own rule and uh, laws. So it's, it's not so easy to pass the law. For example, United States, Canada, and Europe, I, I don't believe your identity, identity card uh, driver license has your fingerprints. But there's a location, a small place in the whole world. It does pass the law. So its identification card include not only the photos, but also a tiny chip to include your fingerprints. And that is Hong Kong. Yes, I think so. Yes, Hong Kong. See, this is the ID card. The photo is here. Now this tiny chip has its fingerprints. So that it makes sure it is you. You can make a photo, fake photo very easy, but it's not so easy to make a fake fingerprint. Okay, it has been applied a lot of places. Now, how about uh, the handwriting? Suppose this is somebody's handwriting here. First, it has thickness. 
Handwriting has one unique property that it has nothing to do with the thickness. So the first thing to do is in the image processing is to thin it down. Suppose it's thickness 10, you need only thickness one. So it is one to 10 ratio, 90% re reduction. And uh, if you have uh, 1,000 pixels, now you only need 100 pixels. From here on, you do segmentation, one by one. See the segmentation is here, one by one. You find that, oh, it is a P, has an E, and so forth. And then you combine them together to check your dictionary. If it has been learned, that's very important. If such signature has been learned before, then you can verify whether it is indeed its signature. So have learning is very important. Aha, talk about handwriting. This is when I mentioned, the, today we have a attendee from Poland. Just a few seconds, I talked to this gentleman. And talk about when you, when you come to the country of Poland, there are two people you think immediately in your mind. First is Japan. And when I was talking, giving a keynote at, at WASA International Conference, they showed me those handwritings. And they have a problem, they assigned me a problem. They say, Chopin was never married, but when he was alive, he has many girlfriends, most notably four. So he has many love letters. However, some of them are fake. So they want me to detect which ones are fake, which ones are real. Then I say, you should give me enough, large enough sample size. Here are the sample sizes they gave me. And those are the true handwriting of Champagne. So based upon this, you can compare with those other handwritings and make sure whether those handwritings are from the same person or not. It's called handwriting recognizer. Hand, hand, uh, <coughs> writer recognition, writer recognition. It is slightly different from signature. Slightly different from signature, but they have the very similar, very similar nature. So, uh, talking about vision, there are also several main things need to be taken care of. First, we see things through our eyes, but it is controlled by the brain, of course. And eyes and brains and the body, human bodies, again, let me see, I'll highlight the word brain. Brain is the control of, it, of the whole thing. The, the, the mystery, it's still a mystery. We do not know exactly how brain function. We just try to dig this mystery little by little. So far we are digging more and more, but it's still not completely solved yet. Uh, that's a big challenge. So let's also come to this plot. Yeah, okay. I mentioned about so-called syntax. Hmm? The syntax, the first thing you contact, you see a word. For example, capital A. When you see capital letter A, you know that is a letter, English letter A. But what does that mean? It means a lot. It means the level. For example, if you have level A, level B, level C. Level A is higher than level B, which is higher than level C. In other words, A is the highest level. Also, it, mean, it may mean a quantity. You know, how many books do you have? I have only a book. A person. So, in other words, when you come to this part, it's called semantics. And according to what you understand as semantics, you will go to the pragmatics. You execute. If you want to give some example, uh, if you want to give some uh, award to people, a competition, you only to give those which get a degree of A, not B. So that means the A has this meaning. Also, if you count, then A means only one, and so forth. In this case, it, it, it matters when you come to this uh, pragmatics. So it is step by step, syntax, semantics, and semantic, and pragmatics. We're living in a world full of this kind of things. Not only natural language, such as uh, English, or um, Polish, or uh, the language of uh, Lithuania, but also machine. Machine, we have the, uh, when ma machine was invented, people has the language, the highest level is called programming language. Programming language such as Pascal, such as uh, Vochen, Kobo, and so forth. That's the, that what you see the syntax is that this level. And then the machine has to translate that into this semantic, that go to the assembly language. And from this assembly language, it goes into machine language. 
And from the machine language, when you send data, it can execute for you. Can give some results. For example, let me see. This is very common course in the computer science as uh, I think first level, first undergrad course. In other words, when you see a very high level program language such as uh, A equals B plus C times D, this is what you see as the syntax. But what does that mean? That means you have first a label with quantity of B plus this result, C times D, and you assign star is has a higher level than plus. So it should be executed first prior to plus. Therefore, you C times D should be done first and then plus B, and that result will be stored in A. That's the semantic level. So in other words, the same language is this. And once you go to the machine language, which is basically zero and ones, that's why we see your conference logo uh, of a lot of zero and ones, I believe. Yeah, and then when you assign a number, say, if we assign a number B equals to one, C equals to two, D equals to three, then what's the result of A is seven. How do you know it's seven? Because of step and step, step by step, syntax, semantics, and pragmatics. So that's the example in terms of programming languages, which also, of course, in daily life, in higher level languages, in natural language, we use the same thing. And of course, in the machine translation, machine understanding, machine learning, also use the same techniques. Now this is an example of the uh, uh, very, very famous uh, ImageNet by Stanford University, by Professor, I think, I believe, Professor Lee. It's a lady, Professor Lee, Stanford University. She created an ImageNet. What it can do for us? It can, for example, do, can recognize things such as uh, as simple as a uh, cat. Well, cat is different from dog from horse, how? By the pattern. But it's very close to tiger, so be careful. You don't misunderstand, don't, don't miss tiger with a cat, because cat is very friendly, but a tiger is not, okay? Tiger may eat you. So be careful, that, that is. Uh, but even you want to characterize, uh, how, do you, uh, how do you recognize this uh, cat? Just like a baby. How the baby learns it's a cat? Well, I think, I believe you can see the cat has two big ears, two big eyes, a nose here, and some uh, stomach here. And then, according to your understanding, finally you got a cat. See, this is a simulation of a human being with two eyes as a vision tool. This is a brain, a neural network here. And then, step by step, you can decide it's a cat. Sometimes even has to go to a neutral network. This is a very big database, ImageNet. Uh, sometimes you have to go through the uh, new network to do this, okay? Now, talking about uh, data. Small database is not very useful. We need very large database. Then what do we mean by large database? It has its own definitions. Around, 19, around 2012, this is the big uh, the data with two point eight zettabyte in the whole universe. And uh, we estimate about 2020 will be about 50 times more. There will be 50 times more data. In the whole, in terms of yeah, the digital, we have called digital universe. Now, the, in, uh, in, uh, today is 2012, United States about 32% of the whole universe database. And China has about 13%. The rest of the world is 32% and so forth. But when we reach 2020, United States will have only 23%. China will be 21%. It's getting, it's getting closer and closer by 2020. There's another term called the wisdom. Intelligence and wisdom, they have very similar meaning. But I believe wisdom has even higher level because wisdom has ethics consideration, whereas intelligence does not. In other words, look at uh, nuclear bomb, uh, nuclear atomic bomb, nuclear bomb, and hydrogen bomb. It's begin become more and more powerful. But if you use the right in the right direction, it's good for human being. 
But if you use the wrong direction, then it can destroy the whole world. In other words, in this case, we call about uh, <clears throat> intelligence has same status. Intelligence, the higher the better. But if you use the intelligence in the wrong direction by the bad guys, such as terrorists, then it's very dangerous. So in other words, there should be some guidance. When we talk about that, then we call, call about the so-called wisdom. So far, people haven't touched that yet. Not yet. Because but, but people just realize it's important. Because uh, it's just like hydrogen bomb, the, the atomic bomb. People already realize that if we are not careful enough at the beginning, then maybe we reach a point without uh, remedy. So we should be very careful. So in other words, uh, we should, I just that we can just mention about at this stage. So the more details about the big data base, big data. See, this is the nuclear, this is the so-called uh, neural network to teach the uh, say, uh, to recognize a, a cat. If the level is higher, it's called deep, deep learning. So there are one, two, three, four. Those are hidden level. Sometimes it's not known to human being. It's only known to the, work, the professionals. So there are more discussions about human face with some different distortion. And it, it, it very shortly, in a few seconds, human face has several geomet geometric properties. For example, this is a very famous TV star. And uh, we believe that he has the, this, this geometric shape. And this is another famous star. He has liquids. And this famous star has different, I call that uh, base, baseball base. Baseball, you have a look at the base. It has this uh, shape. At the base. OK, t since face recognition is so popular and used very important, so there are some more examples about face. So, OK. Also, iris. Those are all biometrics, which is very important. Uh, so those, those are examples. Also, the uh, different data, this is called, uh, this is called uh, infrared image. Infrared image can take the, in, can, can take out information hidden in human bodies. It's between the skin and between, between skin and bones. So here are the examples of iris, uh, infrared image. It can do a lot of things. For example, it can detect breast cancer. People, in a long time, for a long, long time, people think that only women get breast cancer. No, it's not true. Gentlemen, men can also get breast cancer. Here is an example by using infrared. See, here's an example of the human brain cancer. Because this is, the, the, according to its pattern, this is a, a woman's picture. And we use AI technique to do the medical diagnosis. Here's another thing to detect we are, whether you are drugged or you have a drink too much. Um, See, so this is an infrared image of somebody, and this is image processing, and we can do some testing to do the level. According to our learning experience, if your level is 0 0.4 or below, you are normal. If you are above it, then you have something wrong. So here's an example. Suppose we are testing this and call level zero 04, and indeed this guy is above this level. So it is either drugged. This gentleman is either drugged or alcoholic, to has too much alcoholic consumption. This can help police to do as a supplementary testing examination to make sure this guy is indeed drugged or not. This. So the attitude test, OK? OK, this is the overall picture of human AI and pattern recognition. What's the relation? The relation, again, I mentioned about learning. The most important part is learning. Learning involves so many mechanisms, from input data to do the analysis, and then stay, save the result into a dictionary. Once learning is done, then you can do recognition to make a test just like 26 English alphabet, one by one. And then you can say this is capital A, this is capital B, this is C, and all so forth. Now, there's also the color recognition. We know that the color, no matter what color we have, is always formed by three basic colors. 
with different ratios. So once, this is a, actually a real example from Mad, uh, Harvard Medical School. Some professor, med doctors gave me this data. All they need to know is, can you tell me this uh, biomedical imaging has only two areas. One is black, the other one is white. Can you show me which is white, which is black? In other words, we want to binarize this image. How do we do that? There are existing methods called, this method is not, like, not satisfactory, this is not good. This sounds good, it is binarized, but it distortion is too huge. So if you want to combine the first three let the methods, uh, maximize their advantages and minimize the disadvantage, there will come a new one, which is very satisfactory. This is the result. So it's an uh, optimization, part of an optimized example. Okay, this also tells you the difference between measurement. This is actually a joke. I don't have time to do this. But uh, again, let me repeat and emphasize the importance of uh, syntax, semantics, and pragmatics. Also, learn. After we learn, we get knowledge. Every can knowledge, we can recognize. But it's not a one-way street. The more we can recognize, it helps us to get more knowledge, which in turn get us have more learning capabilities. So it's an ended cycle, which is very, very similar to what really happened in our brain. Now talk about uh, more about the AI. There are several main properties to be concerned about which is first image, of course, and then syntax, phonetics, semantics combination, and large connection and uh, between, this is part of natural language, okay. This is in particular for natural language, between the words. And also it has induction and implied meanings. That's very important. It's logic, semantic network, and knowledge representation. All are related. And somehow it is uh, co just co happened to coincide with the big structure of Chinese characters, Chinese words. Chinese words has about 5,000 years old history, and the AI has about 50 years old, 50 years history. So that's, that's a very interesting coincidence, okay? Okay, there are more about the, okay, let me just show you something. I gave this talk at MIT about 20 years ago. This is a picture I show in the, at MIT, C sale. Have you ever, ever heard of CSAIL? Computer Science and AI Lab, CSAIL. And um, when, I give the, when I give a talk over there, I show these slides to them, and they find that uh, about 40 or 50 faculties in the, fa in, the, uh, uh, in, in, the, in the seminar, after about one hour talk, they can easily understand, learn about hundreds of Chinese words without any difficulty. Do you know why? Because those words are in line, inconsistent with our natural observations in our daily life, even a five-year-old child. For example, just take, one, just take one example. Here, this is a symbol of a single tree. Look at a tree. The basic structure of trees is roots and branches. That's very, very old word. And after several years of evolution, this is essential. Uh, nowadays, the single, single tree. This is a small group of trees. And this is even large group of trees, sometimes taller trees. So we have three concepts. Basic tree, uh, single tree, and then a group of trees, and large group of trees. And sometimes even have a uh, um, jungle. So there's four categories, four, four different words. All those words have something in common. That is tree. And this is reflected by the words, by those words, very clearly. A single tree, a group of trees, which is called woods, more trees, forest, and then jungle, which is called sending together. Now you compare with English. Single tree, woods, forest, and jungle, those four words all have something to do with trees. 
the common property in common, but they are, the, it's not reflected from the words. So that's the difference. In other words, if you compare Eastern and Western words, culture, this is one example to show the difference. So it will be helpful for your learning. If you have this in mind, then you can learn more easily, I believe. So this is a picture I take in from a city called Guilin, very beautiful city. It's, which is called uh, uh, the most beautiful city in terms of uh, mountain, river, uh, or water. So it has a very special name assigned as a mountain. It's the best. This is the best in the whole world, most beautiful place. And look at this highlighted blue color. It, you can see what this word means. Look at the structure of this, the top and valley. So this is a mountain. And let me show you more interesting things. What is this word? What does concave mean? Concave. Concave. Is that right? Concave means like a cave. And what is the corresponding word in Chinese? This is concave. What is the, uh, con what is the opposite? Convert. Convex. How do you write the word convex? This is Chinese word convex. Don't, you, don't need it, you don't even need any inter interpretation. I, I think a four or five year old child can easily recognize those words. So that's the difference between two different kinds of language and culture, okay? And that is AI, because AI try to understand what your syntax, semantics, and according to syntax semantics, it can do something, execute pragmatics. So here's again the concept of the learning, okay? Uh, okay, so see, uh, in other words, we are trying to dig out the mystery of our brain but it's still a big mystery. We don't know what it is. But this uh, conference is organized by the informatics of uh, KTU. So I think information, informatics means information and computer science. So maybe you ha have already seen this 10 golden rules for teaching computer science by Professor Tannenbaum. So we don't have time to talk about 10 golden rules, but look at this, this is his uh, picture. He used this very famous image in his book. Everyone, especially in Europe, especially in Italy, anybody from uh, Rome, Roma? Any people from, any s people from R Roma? No, not this time. But if you go to Roma, you will see, oh, this image has shown us a picture in the, a lot of things. This is the Poland conference, look like here. The image is everywhere. Okay, what I want to say is that uh, if you, uh, oh yeah, this is what? This is by Michelangelo, by Sistine Chapel, center of Roma. If you do the feature extractions and rotate 90 degrees, and this picture is a symbol of a lot of things. The, you, there's a magazine cover, the, the stamps, and even the motion picture called uh, E.T. Have you heard of that? It's an old motion picture, but it's still alive especially youngsters, still love to, this is a scientific fiction, scientific fiction. Now, what I want to say is that, uh, look at this brain. This is the human brain. And what we want to do is try to simulate this human brain by using machines. The most recent advanced technology is called quantum computation, quantum computation. And this symbol of quantum computation as well. Well, how powerful, why, is com why do we talk about quantum computation? Very simply and very quickly, it is much, much faster and much more powerful. It can achieve 10, at least 10 times faster as conventional computer. You can do multiple things at the same time. Okay, it's, uh, that's the quantum computer. Uh, okay, let me skip this. So I want, all I want to, okay, the, here are some real examples. This is a man, man driverless uh, car. It can help us uh, do the following. It can help.
probably the, the do the uh, packaging. Can you see? It can automatically do the packaging for you. And uh, it can also avoid the, you can also avoid the uh, head situations. Do not collide with them. You can also obey the traffic light. This is also the traffic light. Only see the red light, only see the green light will continue to work to, to drive up. Okay, we also have some robot with uh, multiple legs. This is example with multiple legs. Four legs, which might act like a horse or a dog. And also two legs, very much look like a human being. <laughs> This is designed by Boston Dynamic Company, which is composed of at least three green MIT researchers. It can overcome the uneven ground, very challenging, tough situation. Also, most recently, there's a restaurant developed by several MIT graduates. Those are the the, the, those are the pictures. The restaurant is totally automated by using AI techniques. For example, you look at you, the three seconds. Oh. See, these are the... human being. Okay, because of time concern, let me continue. There's something important. Let me just uh, let me just uh, continue. Oh, in terms of driverless cars, one important consideration is the road signs. There are some road signs which are very, very dangerous. This is one example. Do you see what's wrong with these road signs? If you want to go to Boston, you are driving on a highway with minimum speed 50 miles per hour. You have no time to, you have only one second to decide. You have, don't have to, young you have to make a very quick decision. Now, if you want to go to Boston, do you go, go straight forward or turn right? I don't have time to do the uh, survey, but in a, I think in one time period, in one time, one time period, I can, uh, audience, I asked the same question about 51 say turn right, 49 say go straight forward. Then it's not right, because you have to, <laughs> you cannot be, this is this example of ambiguity, it's very dangerous. You have, you, since the direction should, the direction should be go straight forward, then we should do this way, or this way. There should be no ambiguity. That's much safer. You don't have time, you cannot, uh, afford considering during incident and then hidden by somebody else. That's very dangerous. And is that only exceptional? No. My, my uh, students gave me uh, this survey. They are full of such things in the whole world. I believe this city must have them. Look at this one. Look at this one. You should keep right or keep left. The word says keep right, but the arrow points to left. Oh, it's very dangerous. Imagine you have a machine robot driving for you. Then it, it, it may have some collision. So in other words, we should be very careful about this. Um, okay, there are, some, there are some other ambiguities, such as uh, do you see a 28-year-old lady or 82 years old lady in the same picture? This is 28 years old. But if you continue to rotate it, the same picture will be considered, will be conceived as 82 years old. What a difference. The same picture. Be careful. Do you think this is a sound attack? Do you think this is another, uh, another head leader of some country? Actually, they are the same thing. See, the same thing. So in other words, you should be careful, okay? Yeah, this is a 
I just thought about maybe it's worth it. Like I don't have uh, teaching and learning the same thing. Let me see. Okay, there are a lot of examples. Some examples. Let me show you. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is a paragraph in English. Can everybody read it fluently? I don't think you have any problem reading it. But if you read carefully, it's full of titles. For example, chances are you have seen this in your inbox according to a research at Cambridge. I did it very regularly. But look at each word. It's totally spelling wrong. The order is wrong. Generally, somehow in our brain, we only care the first letter and the last letter. In between, if you mix up the, the sequence, something like doesn't matter. That's for human beings. However, for machines, so far, machine will just say wrong, wrong, wrong from beginning to the end. The machine doesn't understand a single thing. So that's the difference, the gap between human beings and the machine. And machine. Okay, let me see. Uh, there are a lot of things. The other, let me uh, just uh, conclude the talk by the following. <coughs> yeah, okay. In, in other words, for the future, there are ma three major things that you have to consider. First, is automatic recognition, totally just, just as a human being. Second, threshold is, impo is, is, is important. Uh, and also establish image therapy, called therapy therapy, is a, is a main concern we think uh, we think here, and also the future. See, this is talking about the Chopin, when I was in Warsaw, they showed me, the, this is the piano played by, by Chopin, played by Chopin. And those are some pigeons uh, what, what I get. This is, uh, this is the Marvin Minsky uh, air part. This is Chomsky. This is Zada. And this is Knut, standard Knut. And this is uh, Patrick Winston, the last director of CSAM. And uh, do you know who these are? <laughs> Sounds familiar? If you have a good face recognition in your elbows and brain, then you can recognize them. I believe this is a KTA. Automatic banking processing, bank check processing, developed by MIT where I was involved for seven years before the ATM was actually being used, this guy. Okay, here's another picture similar to the one by Michelangelo, human body. Sounds like a purely artistic, but it's all AI and the rest. Biometric, especially biometric, is a, as a symbol, very good symbol. Finally, uh, I conclude with the journal I found it so two years ago. This is my 32nd birthday. Called AI and uh, PR. It combines artificial intelligence and pattern recognition. I brought several copies here today. I want to present it into some some organizers. Professor Stevens is sitting here. I want to give this journal to to you.
Chelsea has a counterpart from Germany uh, as a chief editor. And I'm from the USA. So now we want to add a third new editor in chief because we, we are growing. We have thousands of papers submitted every month. Thousands. We can only accept about one tenth. One ten percent ratio. Certificate of participation. Thank you for coming.